I'm a member of various internet groups for blacksmithing and all the time I'm seeing people new to the craft having trouble with their forge welds. I decided to make a video to go along with the advice that I give people. It's pretty easy. All you need is that light bulb to click in your head to make it seem easy. We have a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat stock mild steel. That's uh, six by 25 millimeters. And let's get to it. Okay, I am running a mixture of coke and anthracite. Now, this is purely because I was playing with some metallurgical grade coke and I'm not really liking it, so I'm just mixing it in with my regular anthracite to get rid of it. But this this uh, this is good because tractor supply anthracite like I'm running here is what a lot of you have access to and it will be the same for charcoal. Now, it would be easier with bituminous coal because you can make that cave and you can really look at it. But step one is we're just going to stick our piece in this fire and crank or let the blower run if you have an electric blower. And we're just going to watch. We're gonna watch as the metal goes from cold to red. To a dull orange. To bright orange. And I apologize, I don't have a filter for the camera. To yellow. Now that we're at yellow, we're just going to watch this fire. In particular, pay attention right above the coal line and about midway up the fire. Occasionally, we're gonna pull out the piece and take a look at it. We're still at yellow. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna watch. We're gonna watch for sparks that tell us we're burning the metal. But what we're looking for is uh, if you could peek in here, your metal will be the same color as the fire, or it'll look like melted butter, the color of melted butter. That's what we got right there. But we aren't gonna stop here yet. Technically, that's welding. But we are just gonna watch this thing sparkle. We're gonna watch it sparkle until we can't stand it no more. Okay, you see the sparks? We are definitely out of welding heat now. We're gonna keep letting it go. We're gonna work, learn. We are learning right now what burning the metal looks like in our fire, what welding heat looks like in our fire. See all the bumpiness on the side of that? Some of that is molten material that's actually run off to the side when I tilted the piece. Some of that is ash and coal from the fire stuck to the metal. Now you can see after, once it starts sparkling, I pulled it out. 
showed you guys and put it back in. There hasn't been really that much sparks from the fire. But when I pulled that out, it super sparkled. That means I put it in the reducing layer of my fire before I had it shoved down in the fire pot so it hit that oxidation layer. So it would shoot up sparks out through the flame. But now we're in that neutral zone where all the oxygen has been consumed. So it doesn't spark until I pull it out of the fire. I'm going to relocate you guys real quick. the same burned up piece of metal that we were just experimenting with. We're going to fold it over. No flux. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing back in the fire and we're going to let it sparkle until we cannot stand it anymore. And then we're gonna bring it out and we're gonna weld it. And I guarantee you, this thing's going off like a Roman candle. You start tapping it, it is going to weld. Now a note on welding. The thinner your material is, the lighter blow you wanna give it. The thicker the material is, the heavier blow you're going to have to give it to push those welded surfaces together. A good example I can give you is like a big Damascus billet made out of a bunch of skinny plates. It's, it's about mass under the hammer. Technically, they're all skinny, so you think you need to give it light taps, but a lot of mass under the hammer that you need to drive together. So you gotta get the heavy blows to have that energy reach to the middle layers, one of those middle layers. Okay, now look at the fire. We've got sparkles. We're gonna let it sit. I got my flip my piece. We wanna make dang sure this thing's gonna weld. We are learning forge welding. I'm not giving it a crazy amount of air. I was to get it up to temperature, but then now that it's sparkling, I've backed it down a bit. Okay. Like I said, we're going to let this sparkle until we can't stand it no more. I can't stand it no more. But, see this? Welded. Now the end split a little bit because I didn't really hammer on the end. But you see we have our first forge weld. Now what you're gonna do is chop this off or give it another fold. Put it back in the fire and each time you're gonna let it sparkle less and less to see, until you reach the point where you can't get them to stick. And once you've done that, do it with flux. Start the whole process over again with flux. Put the flux on the bar, see how the flux looks on the metal from cold all the way up to pass spark to, to sparkling and then same thing bring it out super sparkler weld it with the flux and keep going less and less sparks every time until you're down into just the yellows where it doesn't even spark at all 
the goal is to learn how cold you can weld it or in essence what is welding heat what can i weld at what can't i weld at hopefully this video made it click in your brain like it did mine the first time i pulled out a sparkler from the fire and hit it and it stuck together